Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here with my 10 cards one kit video for the Scrappin' for Less May Countryside card kit. I introduced the card kit and showed the contents in more detail in a separate video so you can check that out if you want to see that. But I am just going to go through the different collections as I create my cards. There actually are more than 10 cards in this video and there will be an accompanying blog post where I will give you a few more details on the cards and you can just look at still pictures is kind of the main focus there. So first up, this is one of the collections that includes some paper and stickers and little cut aparts from Doodlebug Designs. And there's also a Sunny Studios Miss Moo stamp set that was exclusive to the Scrappin' for Less kit. I don't think I mentioned that in my haul video, but I really enjoy the exclusives for them. I wanted to use the Just For You little cut apart that come, I guess it's called a die cut, uh, that came with the kit because it, I felt like it would just make such a simple and easy card. And there was a little sheep sticker to pair perfectly with it. So I'm using my Cat Scrappiness Stitch Scallop dies a lot throughout the video, so I'll mention it a few times if you don't quite catch what I'm doing here with it. But I also cut apart the little bandana paper. So like if you cut it apart, it makes, oh, I think like nine or 12 little bandanas. And I find when I was work, I found when I was working with this paper pad in a different setting, and I will have that video out soon where I did a six by six paper pad tutorial that it made for really easy framing of different little characters. So I'm going to use that here. But I also die cut out my paper layers with that Stitch Scallop Cat Scrappiness die. And the layer that goes underneath it, I also die cut that out with a smaller version to basically save paper, but mostly because it would create a little extra piece that can then become an embellishment on a different card. So that red background paper that looks like a bandana, I die cut a smaller stitch scallop rectangle out of the center of it. Then I covered it with this crisscross paper. So it looks like there's a full sheet behind there, but then I have this bonus piece. And so that's just a little tip for saving money and resources if you want to just, you know, cut it with a basic die. And even if you don't make another card with it right away, I would still suggest doing it. Just use one of your more simple basic shapes. I like that the stitched scallop adds a tiny bit of detail, so I went with that this time. And to be honest, they're new to me, so I'm still quite having fun with them. So I had created that first Just For You sheep card. Now I'm creating a second card with the cow from the stamp set. I did not put any coloring in this video just because these videos are pretty long as is. So I do have coloring tips on other videos on my channel and there's a lot of good colorists out there. I always like to shout out Sandy Alnock and Kelly Latavola because they're two people I enjoy watching and they do a lot of great ideas. Kathy Rakusen, of course, too. Um, so for this card, I decided to use the Cow Are You sentiment from the stamp set and I had to cut it out to make it work. And then I started pairing it up. I thought that the paper, the blue paper with the cows on it was a little too busy, but the cow print itself, the black and white cow print, worked out pretty well. Again, I cut a smaller rectangle out of the background paper so that I could have it for another card. I put the cow are you sentiment onto one of those little bandana pieces that I mentioned earlier because they work great for sentiments as well. And now I'm gonna combine these three little pieces. So it will say, hello sunshine, how are you? And I thought that was a fun little punny way of doing it and also helped me to combine some of the elements that I had created or that had come with the kit. And so it looks like the little cow is talking there. Now I have a lot of good scraps and another cow. So generally in this video, I am going to create three cards with each collection. There are four collections and that'll equal 12 cards. So usually with a kit, I would do 10 cards, but uh, this time with this kit, I kind of just get rolling on a collection sometimes and I wind up making a few cards. There's even a part of me that's kind of tempted to like use up the whole kit and see how many cards I could make, but I think it would make for really long videos. 
And so I don't know, maybe I'll try that again in the future if I work with them um, rather than just trying to do 10 and calling it a day. However, um, with this particular video, I am leaning towards the idea of kind of keeping the collections together. What's nice about the scrapping for less kit is they do give you things coordinated in these little collections, but it all kind of mixes and matches across that as well. So there's no need for you to stick to the collections. And there are times when I'll borrow a sentiment stamp or an image from one collection into the other. And I think that that, I mean, it's perfectly reasonable because you're getting the whole thing in your kit. You know, it's just, it's all from the kit. I really do try to stick closely to the kit in general in my 10 cards, one kit videos. And this is certainly no exception. So here, I'm using up the scraps to finish my third card and I just layered up some scraps and stamped a sentiment. Now I'm moving on to a different collection and this one had the stamp that I found the most tricky because it had a lot of words on it but not words that are sentiments. Oh, am I, I'm mixing it up maybe. I know. Uh, no, this is it. So I had to, sorry, I'm trying to remember what I was doing. Um, so it had a lot of words, but they weren't sentiments. And for this particular card, I just absolutely loved that paper. So I die cut it with the cat scrappiness stitched scallop rectangle die. And I just stamped a sentiment on it. And I stamped the cow are you because that paired well with the particular paper. And I just, I thought the paper was so cute. I didn't want to do anything else. So it's a little bit of a cheater card and another, so that's a good reason that you get 12 cards since I did make some that were just so simple. So anyway, back to that sentiment set or stamp set. Again, they're not sentiments. It's like farm fresh beef. Like that's not a sentiment. So I was trying to figure out like how best to use this. And I think it's because my style isn't super vintagey, so I wasn't quite sure. But I thought of using the letter stickers that come with it because this little mini collection also had the letter stickers. And I thought there must be a way I can combine them. So what I'm going to do is essentially stamp out the sentiment farm fresh high. I originally tried to do hello, but the sizes didn't quite match up the way that I liked. Um, I thought that the hello was too big for the um, sentiment. So I just put the high on the bottom of this piece of patterned paper that was cut again with the stitch scallop dies. Um, but it was also cut from the paper of the collection. There was one sheet that is patterned on one side and solid on the other and those are always really useful. But this sentiment says farm fresh beef and it has these little, um, they, they kind of remind me of photo corners, these little details in the corners. And I didn't want those because I would only be getting the top two and I didn't want the beef. So to make it work, I had to mask all of that off. And then I found like I put a lot of pressure with my ink accidentally. I should have been a little bit more gentle and it kind of got ink in areas that weren't ideal. And so my first stamped impression wasn't great. And I thought, well, it's a misty, so I can probably just stamp it again. But I was a little bit worried that with all the masking, I was gonna mess it up. So I decided I would just trace over the part of the sentiment that I messed up. But anyway, I was able to modify it. And I just wanted to, I wanted to show that idea because I think that there probably were others who were a little bit thrown off with this particular sentiment set or a particular stamp set. So I thought, you know, I'll show you uh, another way of using it and how to make a custom sentiment with it. So I hope that was helpful. I also wanted to add one of the tags that came in my kit. Remember with the scrapping for less kits, the little cut aparts that you get, like the little tags and things like that, or the bits of sticker are going to vary from kit to kit. So I had a sheep and the just for you you might not, but you probably have something similar that you can adjust. You probably don't have this tag with the rooster on it, or you might not have that tag with the rooster on it, but you might have something similar. Um, and the paper is very little bit and things like that. I hope though that the general designs will be still useful to you and give you some ideas of how to use the kit. So I tied a little bit of ribbon from another collection on there and I was ready to call that card done. 
I was focusing on trying to use the little tag cut apart die cut things because they, you know, they come in the kit, they make things easy. And again, I was a little bit challenged by this particular stamp set. So I wanted to cover garden notes since that wasn't, you know, didn't really make sense for a card, but homemade with love could make sense for a card. And so I decided to use that sentiment and I just very carefully positioned everything such that it would still look like that was just like a pretty flower tag underneath it. And I recommend doing that with these card kits because occasionally you'll get something that you're like, I don't know that this is quite like makes sense on a card. It'd be great for a scrapbook. So, you know, of course, just use it in your scrapbook or see if you can be kind of creative as you cover it up. So on to the next kit. I made three cards with that one. And this one came with that Avery L stamp set that is adorable. I love it so much. And it's an, again, it's an exclusive to Scrappin' for Less. So, um, you know, if, you're, if you like it, you can't just go find it in the Avery L shop. Um, and I think that that's, again, I said this in the haul video, but like that's awesome that you're not going to get the same thing you might have already purchased very often because they do so many exclusives in the kit. So I started looking through the papers. Like I said, I was really excited about the stamp set, but then the paper was kind of vintagey. And that, again, not my like go-to style. So it's, I, you know, kind of like pondered the papers for a bit to see how I might like to match them up. I decided that since this pink was relatively solid, it would be great for stamping sentiments on. And so I die cut two pieces of it with the stitch scallop dies and figured I would kind of use those to help me plan something out. I colored a lot of the chicks. I had stamped each stamp in the whole kit two times and colored it so that I would have a lot of pieces to work with when it came time to make cards and I wouldn't have to stop and color anything. But since there's three chicks, that means I have like six or maybe even more. Oh, you know what? Because the chicks were so tiny, they like filled in extra spaces. So I colored a lot of them, probably like 10 or so. And so since I had them all, I thought, well, why not do something super fun and stack them all up? Because the sentiment says you're one of my favorite chicks. So it makes sense that there would be a lot of chicks on the stack or like on the card. And I think it would be fun to color one of them kind of differently so they stood out. But I had colored them all the same because I hadn't really had a card idea in mind. In retrospect, I had used like I used all five chicks here because things tend to look good and odd. So you'd usually go three or five. And I think I'm, if, you know, if I did it again, I'd probably just do three rather than using all five of the chicks just because I don't really like how it hangs off there. But I thought that five would be fun because it would look like really ridiculous that there were so many of them. Um, and there was also this bit of twine in this particular collection where, again, I hadn't fully planned out the cards, so I wind up trying to kind of go back and, you know, make things work. And so that's what I did here with the twine. I thought, well, it gave a little bit more going on in the panel here. So since that right side of the panel was really empty and the left side was really busy, I decided to tie a little bow and I'm going to get really frustrated trying to tie this tiny bow and so eventually it'll cut out but I just tied off the bow there and I let that sort of balance out the other side and I'm going to mount it onto that flower background paper where again I cut a smaller stitch scallop rectangle out of so that I wasn't wasting the paper and I had elements to easily use for the next card. Now the Scrappin' for Less kit comes with a ton of ingredients so you definitely wouldn't need to do all this extra die cutting to have enough elements to work with to create a lot of cards but I think that you know why not if you have a limited amount of paper and again once I have those things just kind of sitting on my desk as essentially scraps although they don't really look like scraps because they're really pretty I just go ahead and use them on the next card and it inspires me and helps me to work quickly and make a lot of cards. Next up, I decided to, I wanted to use the hay because there's this hay there sentiment in the stamp set. 
And at first I thought maybe I'd pair it with one of the chicks, but it seemed a little small. It wasn't quite holding enough weight on the card. So then I decided to go with the cow and I really struggled with trying to figure out where to place the hay because when I placed it behind him, it kind of just looked like it was growing out of his back and that didn't quite look right. So I decided to sort of group the hay on one side and the cow on the other. And I'm using that die cut piece that I originally did out of the pink paper because I knew it would create easy places to put sentiments. And then that scrap, that's not really a scrap, of the flower paper from my last card. And I decided to pop up one of the hays and what little pieces of straw, I guess, or hay, whatever, and the cow so that it had a little bit of dimension to it since it was a, these are all in some ways relatively simple cards, but it's not as simple when you take into consideration the time I spent coloring the images that you're just, you're not seeing that part in the video. And they're kind of coming together basically like stickers here, but you know, they definitely took that extra time. And so I'll just, I put down the cow to make sure that when, so, you know, I kind of, position things so that my hay wouldn't be sticking off more than my cow, that sort of thing. So I kind of just did it in stages to make sure that it would all work out. And I also wanted to mention, because I always I try to just mention this when I think it's helpful, I try to donate a good amount of my cards to organizations like Cards for Hospitalized Kids, but also I have a list on my blog of other places you can donate cards. So if you like to make a lot of cards, but you don't need to send as many as you make, or you have extra kits and you want to kind of use them up, I think that's a great way to do it. And I will, there's always in my video description, a link to that page on my blog, but um, I will try to add it a bit more prominently this particular time. And I'm also going to try to add some farm jokes to that page because on that page, I have PDF jokes that you can print out and then um, since a lot of the organizations ask you to put a little something in the card to kind of make the kids smile and I think jokes are a you know very simple way to do that so I have like ocean themed jokes and Christmas themed jokes and I think one is like for mermaids and pirates from another scrap and for less kit that I made a bunch of cards with and also because there's a lot of really cute awesome mermaid and pirate stamp sets out there but I'm thinking I'm going to try to do a farm set of jokes so that you guys can use that to help you donate your cards and make it a little bit easier. So next up, again, I'm just using scraps. I'm kind of piecing together little bits that are left over. I cut some more uh, stitch scallop rectangles out of that pink and I want to just add some fun farm animals. I like the muchis gracias sentiment but to fill out the card I just added two chicks around him because again they were already colored so why not. I'm moving on to the last collection in the kit and this one included a, a couple of pieces of pattern paper but they were all the same sort of picnic blanket plaid and that was actually kind of challenging for me you think oh well you know they're all the same pattern different colors that would actually match really easily and be simple but I don't know like for me I guess I'm like more used to mixing lots of different patterns and so I found it a bit challenging at first so I stuck to a simple card to begin with I had this hogs and kisses sentiment still left from one of the other collections from the one with the doodle bug in it and this collection came with these stickers that had a pig and a heart and so that, well that all goes together really simply I put it with the purple and this time instead of using the stitched scallop rectangles these are the stitched scallop squares also from cat scrappiness and I decided to just cut out three of them and line them up in a row off to the left of my card. I don't always love cards that have a lot of white space like that, but I do think that sometimes that can look really cute and you don't always have to have layers and layers and layers on your cards. Also, if you do things like that or you leave a lot of white space, I do recommend a thicker white card base. So I use 110 pound recollections. I wait for 50% off coupons and you know that generally does a job but you don't have to if you get this scrapping for less kit which I didn't mention is that 
it comes with 110 pound Nina, two pieces of it, which makes four card bases, and then a bunch of other really thick colored card stock. So in this particular instance, you could just use that. I just have a tendency to save my colored card stock for when I want to die cut things out rather than just making card bases out of them. But that's more of a, a personal preference. And I like being able to kind of collect a few pieces each time I get a kit rather than buying a whole stack. I never even know what I need until I want it. Anyway, I'm creating a card over here I'm supposed to be telling you about. I borrowed this red picnic paper from the Doodlebug collection. It's, it wasn't included in mine, my set of papers from the this collection that had all the gingham. That's the word for it, right? It's gingham. Um, and I'm creating a simple rectangle shaker. I put a double layer of foam tape all along the edges in the back after attaching a piece of acetate and cutting out the center again with that stitch scallop rectangle die. I just figure if I'm going to use a die, I may as well use it a whole bunch in one video so that you can see that, you know, those basics are worth it. I stamped the sentiment. Did someone say picnic? And it's a little hard to read. So again, if I were going to repeat this, I might not do that. Although in real life, it's way easier to read. It's something about the video makes it look even worse, but I can actually read it just fine. And this is going to be a shaker card. And you, if you've watched my channel, you probably know. I love to use like a ton of shaker material in my shaker. I have a lot of sequins. I always have a lot of sequins. This this Scrapping for Less kit and all of them come with a bag of sequins for each collection. So you'll accumulate plenty really fast if you don't just use them. So I just used the whole bag and made one shaker card with an entire bag of sequins, which might seem a little bit excessive, but I think that it's really fun like that. And like I said, you, you know, most of us have more sequins than we're going to use anyway. So may as well go for it and have fun. And I am going to put the little pigs from the court, the, from this collections stamp set onto the blanket. So they look like they're having a little picnic and then all the shaker stuff will shake, all the sequins will shake around them. And then I was trying to incorporate the elements that were included in the, I think it's called double dip? No, banana split sundae. So you get like the highest level of the kit, which I happen to, and they're just called banana split. It comes with some extras. And I hadn't used those yet. And I thought it would be fun to show you a card with some of those extras as well. So if you only got the standard kit, you've still seen a lot of great ideas. But I just wanted, for the people who had the banana split, I wanted to throw in a few things for them. Well, sorry, one card. It's not a lot. For them as well. I took the yellow cardstock from the kit. I put some stick it behind it. And I cut out a whole bunch of the little tiny chicks from the... They're from the die that comes in the scrapping for less banana split level. So you get this like little die that has a rooster, a hen, and a baby chick. And I use that you are one of my favorite chicks sentiment again. And then I use the ribbon burlap, whatever you call it, that also came with the banana split level. But I trimmed it smaller. And it didn't really have any trouble with the fraying, even though I trimmed it like this. But you could put a little glue on the edge if you don't want it to fray. So I'm going to layer that behind the chick panel. Then I'm going to put the yellow ribbon on top. Because again, I try to kind of use up my kits. I try not to hold on to them forever. Because once I've made, you know, a good chunk of cards, I kind of tend to forget about them. And I don't, I want to make sure I use them pretty well. So I just go for it and I use up the ribbon the first time I use the kit. It, you know, I try. I don't, you know, I'm not always successful. But um, I think that that's a good idea rather than like saving it for the perfect card because you're probably, I don't know. I find that I save things for the perfect card and then I have them years later. So I'm stopping, I haven't, I stopped doing that. And I just kind of go for it. I'm going to put the yellow ribbon across. I am using my ATG gun for all, almost all of my adhering except for the things like the foam tape and the stick and whatever. It's just really strong glue. And I can roll it right across my ribbon, which I have found to make attaching ribbon way more convenient. And so then I'll just tuck the edges of that yellow ribbon under. It's relatively simple. If you want to go fancier, tie a bow. That would look really cute. I'm not super good at bows, as you could have seen earlier. Um, 
And then I'm going to put a little bit of foam tape because that ribbon is adding quite a bit of dimension. So if I put a layer of foam tape behind my panel, it won't be all lumpy and bumpy. And I'll just make sure to put the foam tape where it's not touching the ribbon, where it's adhering right directly to the purple paper so that, again, it just looks a lot cleaner. And I did a little collection of chicks on the top and bottom to create some interest and in, in movement throughout the card. So that's my last card with the kit. As mentioned, there will be a coordinating blog post so that you can check out the cards a little bit more in detail, look at some still pictures, see what the finished card looks like, get some more of the, you know, I said details already. Um, I will leave you links to Scrapping for Less. I think this kit is still available. If not, you can sign up for the next kit because they're all fun like this. And I'll leave you links to other um, 10 Cards 1 kit videos. So if you want to check those out and and, you know, because assumedly you kind of like that thing because you're here. Um, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, like I mentioned, 10 cards, one kit, six by six paper pad tutorials. If you love pattern paper like I do, those are on my channel. So please subscribe. And thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you taking this time. I know it's a longer video, but I hope that you got some fun value out of it and you enjoyed. And I hope you enjoyed playing with your kit because it is super cute. I just, I can't get over the Avery L and uh, Sunny Studios cows from this particular kit. Have an awesome day. Bye.